I would like the beautiful, the forgiving, the talented, big-chested art teacher to please step forward. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Hello again, welcome back to another episode of Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and educator attempting to bring you the best in art historical content and videos. Do you think we can trust this guy? As always, I appreciate the likes, shares, subscribes, and comments. I'll take any of them. Thanks. God damn it, why didn't you say so? Come here, brother. Give me a hug. Well, you know, it's funny, I was just flipping through this book on King Tutankhamun. And it wasn't too long ago, and I did a video on ancient Egypt. And in that video, I talked a little bit about the tomb of King Tutankhamun, better known as King Tut. And I think now would be a really good time that I'm diving into this book that I tell you a little bit more specifically about the tomb of King Tutankhamun. King Tut. How'd you get so funky? funky? Did you do the funky? Looking down into Egypt, one would have to dig underground, under the sand, to find the tomb to King Tut. In the grand scheme of Egyptian history, King Tut, or Tutankhamun, was very insignificant. But what makes him significant is that his tomb was the first unplundered site that was discovered in modern times. A British archaeologist was being funded to find a tomb in Egypt. After years of meticulously combing through the desert, in the last year of his funding, a member of his team would find the steps that would lead down into the tomb of King Tut. Grave robbers will be shot. Good thing we're not grave robbers. This was a first modern look at what the pharaoh would have had in their tomb. The first room that they would explore was called the antechamber. This was a room that was filled with chariots, furniture, statues, and various other items. Upon entry into that room, it was basically all sealed off. All of the doors were sealed shut. Eventually they would discover a room called the annex. This is a room filled with food and water type supplies for the pharaoh in the afterlife. They would then go into the burial chamber. This is where the body of the pharaoh was found. His body was placed in a sarcophagus and three layers of caskets, as well as a very elaborate death mask. Connected to the burial chamber was the treasury. Obviously this was a room that was filled with gold and various treasure that was personal to the pharaoh. Also in the chamber, he was buried with several pets, as well as other children that were likely born prematurely. Many of the statues and depictions of King Tutankhamun are very much idealized. He was a young man who became king as a very young boy, but he had lots and lots of health problems. His parents were brother and sister, and he had a lot of genetic health problems he would have had what we know today as having a club foot and various other genetic deformalities. There's very much a curse that is associated with Tutankhamun that most people have heard about. So I'm just going to cut right to the chase and give you the spoiler alert on that one. There is a curse, but it's called mold. Mold spores would grow when you kick up that mold and you touch the walls and you breathe it in without a respirator, it's going to lead to some problems. Most of the people that went into King Tut's tomb did die because in 1922 they weren't using respirators and taking safety precautions. Well hey, what do I know? I color for a living, but man, I love that story.
I'll turn this damn bus around. That'll end your precious little field trip pretty damn quick, huh?